Hello, my lovely fellas and felines. How's it going? Freedom of Fantasy, your holistic songwriting. Welcome to another episode of Me vs. the Internet, where we talk about the big questions that interest you, songwriters, producers, musicians out there. And today we're asking the question, should you study music or not? We got a lot of questions, uh, a lot of comments on the last video, and some of them were huge. Uh, we're going to try to get through all of them today. Not all of them, but a selection. There's already a lot to read. So I'm going to go through it as quickly as I can. Let's jump right into it. All right, first comment comes to us from Kagood Music, who says, No, you don't need to go to school to study music. Anything you learn in class can be learned on the internet, but what you get out of going to school are three things. First, a safe environment where you're allowed to encourage and encourage to experiment and fail with a little consequence. Proof of dedicated study in the field in the form of a degree. And networks, your professors, your alumni association, your classmates can all be extremely helpful in the future. Uh, I'd add two more things to that, actually. Um, first of all, you get to ask questions, which is a really great thing. And secondly, is you can see others fail, and you can learn from other people's mistakes, mistakes instead of just your own. Anyways, moving on to Fightless Bird, who says, I mean, the most appropriate thing to do if you want to pursue a music career is to study music. It's just the right, most morally correct decision. Morally correct as well. <laughs> but let's be honest, you don't need to have any musical knowledge to make it in the industry and become a household name. Just take a look at the most successful artists right now. None of them can even read sheet music. That's true, even though, of course, that's not the only thing you learn in conservatory or music school or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a lot of things you learn there. And personally, I've never really needed to read sheet music since then. I mean, I do use it for, um, you know, writing up the notes for the artist series and stuff like that. But personally, with, my, with songwriting myself, I don't really need to read sheet music all that much. It's good to know because it's just a universal language almost now. Not universal, but like a global language by the, at this point. But it's not necessarily the only thing I learned at college. I learned a lot more things, obviously, about different styles. It's about music theory and understanding how music works and being able to describe things with uh, certain words. That's really what I think helped me, like from the theoretical knowledge, that's the things that probably helped me most. Anyways, moving on to a comment by David Corey who says... It depends on a few things. First, the kind of music that you want to make. I make hip-hop and electronic with a focus on sound design, neither of which call for anything that much more complex than what we uh, that what can be achieved using the absolute basics of music theory. I don't need it because I will never use it. Second is whether you need to communicate those ideas in a collaborative space. It's much easier to describe a chord progression to a chord guitarist, for example, if you both know what each chord is called. Yeah, very, very true. For me, I write, produce, and sing everything myself, so against the, again, those skills just are necessary. Even if it won't be useful, though, if it's interesting to you, by all means, learn it. I've learned a lot more than I will never ever need right here on YouTube, just because I think it's cool. Visceral Abomination says, Stay the hell away from college for things like music and art. You can learn anything you need online for free and a whole lot cheaper. Um, oh, I don't think you can actually learn everything online, even though it's getting very close. I think a big part of going to college is just, yes, you can learn everything online, probably, yes, you can. It's, first of all, you have to find it and you have to know what to look for. And having a teacher who guides you through the process and who kind of takes you by the hand and says, like, now we have to learn this so we can later on look at all of this other stuff. Just having something, someone to, like, guide you through the whole process, I found that really useful, personally. If you want to look, get into music theory and all that stuff, which you really don't need to, but that was me. Wilson Hybrid says... If you can scratch the education itch on your own merit, then don't go. Nothing stops you from reading books or watching videos. There are a ton of online courses these days, too. The truth is that most musicians who want to make a career out of it would benefit more from diving in headfirst, getting gigs and experience, than going to an expensive university to stagnate for three or four years. Oh, ouch, that hurts, because that is so true for a lot of my colleagues. I personally had that, that stagnation thing that you just go to college just to have a little bit more time before you have to make money. I did that with my first college, I think. But there I met uh, one of my best friends now who's an actor and he was always so so driven to like actually make money also during his study times and he also made it had a pretty good income even those during those times and that like really drove me to and told me like hey you know what I should actually be making money already like I shouldn't wait till after college because it's not like you get your degree and all of a sudden everyone's just throwing jobs at you that's just not how it works basically you can use college as a as a sort of platform but only for a little while. You have to like already gradually build your income so that when you finished with when you finish with school, you already have a steady income kind of. That's that's ideally how you want to treat it. And so with my second study, I, I quit studying jazz guitar, started media music in Enschede at Artes, uh, that's in the Netherlands, and there I really went all in. And from day one, my only goal was to turn this into something that I can make a living off and to do something that I'm really happy with and that I'm proud of. 
So yes, don't use college for stagnation. If you feel like you're only doing it because you, you're unsure whether you'll ever be able to make money with it, it's not for you. You really need to go in saying like, hey, I can do this. This is going to be fine. I, I know it's going to be challenging. I know it's going to be difficult, but I can do this. I can, if I put my, my all to it, I can make it. Moving on to a comment by Peter Fitzsimmons who says, you need to study what you do, whether you get th uh, that through college, the internet, or experimentation, you need an understanding of the work you can do, so you can do it quickly and effectively. If you compose, you need to understand how different musical ideas interact, so you can get things on the page quickly. If you want to play in a wedding band, you need to be able to learn a song by ear quickly to keep up with large changing set lists. If you accompany a church choir, you need to know how to sight read as you are generally given your sheet music at rehearsal with a full choir of people counting on you to help them learn. College is not necessarily Necessary study is. That's a really great comment, and I really love it. You're absolutely right. Um, that's a really good point. You you definitely need to study what you do. The question is whether you need to go to conservatory or not, and that's really going to depend on you as a person. Um, but what it comes down to is if you, and this is so, something someone else said, said earlier as well, if you network, if you're playing with others, having a certain um, certain basics that you can all agree on that you can all come back to and that is like the language of music knowing what chords are called etc is really helpful for sure next we have a comment by amber jane who says i found it really depends on the person i'm an abandoned about four of my bandmates attempted studying music and i found it ruined it for them so they quit i study musical theater and i find that i couldn't be doing any better for myself turning music into a structured system does seem to take away from the point of music especially if you aim to create your music and they are putting you into a box but i do know personally studying music theater but I do know personally studying musical theater, I am learning so many valuable things that I believe are crucial to me becoming the performer I want to be. Very good point. Um, it's also about exactly what kind of music you study. There, it's not, there's not just music you can study. For me, I tried that. I tried studying jazz music and it really wasn't my thing. Uh, so I switched to media music, which was much more inclusive, and it was, you know, there were many more parts that I was be able allowed to stir in, so to say. Uh, so it was more about music production and songwriting and, and things like that, and more the artistic side of things, not so much a performing for por the performance side of things, where it's all about like being the quickest and bestest and cleanest kind of player and having the best sound, which really never really intrigued me as a as a person. Just achieving that level of mastery never really appealed to me so much. I was always more the artist, artistic kind, kind, the creative person. That's always what I've been really good at. I like to create things. Um, and so I had to find a different study. It's before you study music, really think about what interests you, what really fascinates you about music. Do you want to achieve mastery at your instrument or do you want to be able to write great songs or do you want to be creative? Do you want to create stuff? Do you want to be artistic? It's a really big question. So I think this comment here by Amber Jane really highlights that really well, that it's all about finding the right study for yourself. Max FTG says, Max from France, you left your conservatory years? Not me. Five long, painful years of playing a million meaningless notes, contemporary BS music. I went back to rock music after that, but even if it hurts to say, it, when I, whenever I read Counterpoint, the learning comes back and I watch for parallel fifths and stuff. But then again, there's a lot of Counterpoint in Cobain's music, and he was not educated in music. It was all out of intuition. There's a lot of parallel fifths there, though, as well. One day, Django Reinhardt, who was not educated in music, was listening to some Ravel played by a pianist friend of his who was educated in music. Pianist, really weird word to read fast. Django made him stop at some point and played the same part several times. Then he said to his friend, Ravel made a mistake here. This chord makes no sense. The day after that, the friend went to his counterpoint teacher and told him about that mistake story. The teacher took the music sheets, looked at it, and said, that's right, your friend is right. All out of intuition. Well, yeah, <sighs> there's the big question whether there's right or wrong chords in the first place. Um, and yes, there's many, many musicians out there like, you know, uh, Wes Montgomery or, um, you know, Lennon, another another famous example, that allegedly didn't know how to read music, Kurt Cobain is another one, uh, and still wrote some fantastic music. And I think it's probably true. You really don't need it. I mean, the first three years of my uh, songwriting career, I wrote completely without music theory. Like, I had no idea what intervals were, and I loved it. And I think I wrote some really nice music back in those days. I think I learned a lot in those days. And I think songwriting has way more to do with like structuring and having good ideas than it has to do with like being able to name things and finding, you know, figuring out what like kind of intervals you're using. That's all of that can come from intuition, I, th I think. But what you really have to teach yourself is to be creative, original, have interesting ideas, to be able to write good hooks on uh, piano, guitar and vocals and to write good lyrics. And all of that has nothing to do with music theory. Really, so anyways. 
Moving on to uh, Ramkumar Baby, who says, resources all over the web. If you don't have the right questions, you won't get the right answers. Yes, it also comes down to you. It's not just about the teachers or about the study or whatever. Yes, you are a big part of this as well. If you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to get any answers. I was lucky enough. As I said, I for my jazz studies, I just kind of went through. I didn't really know what was happening. It felt like it was a whirlwind happening around me, and I didn't really feel in control. When I then moved to the uh, the Netherlands to study media music, I felt much more in control. I, I, at this point, I much more knew what I wanted out of music. I said, like, okay, music production, this is what I really want to know about. This is, here's my questions. And I was much more proactive. I asked much more questions. Um, and it was a completely different experience. And I, I feel like I really needed that first study and uh, a year of, like, real frustration of not knowing who I was as a person of what I wanted to really find myself a little bit more and to figure out like, okay, this is what I'm actually interested in. Here's how I want to approach music. And then with my second study, I think I nailed it. Like I really used those four years for good. I really got so much out of those four years, which is regular study time in the Netherlands. Anyways, moving on to another uh, answer by Julian Doe, who says, Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry if my answer is long, but this topic moves me. I have a bachelor's degree in music, and I started studying on, uh, after years spent between performances and compositions. The reason that led me to attend a degree course was the one that I saw my results as a performer and a composer thwarted by the limits I had in my musical knowledge and technical. Having a good theory foundation to prove as a performer has speeded up many steps and opened up new creative possibilities and new career opportunities. Alongside that, the college helped me to expand my knowledge in genre and fields that would be hardly discovered all by myself. My only regret is not having stayed at the uni uh, at the uni when I've begun to develop a serious in interest in music. It's true that the internet is a huge source of information, but if you don't have a proper guide that selects and optimizes the material that is available, your risk is to get lost, jumping from a video to an article, from one topic to another, without a real program that can fill the gaps. Very good point. Instead of learning something that can, uh, can only get confused even more, the most correct use of the sources on the internet, from my point of view, is to use them as an appendix to a, source, a course or study and not as the main resource. Yes. That is definitely much more helpful in that way. And you also see through the bullshit quicker. It does not have to be a college degree, but a school where there's someone that you can meet face to face, it can be good enough. The value of a teacher who follows your progress, corrects your mistakes, and optimizes your skills, directing you towards an optimal path for your career, giving you real-time feedback on what you're doing, the relationship with other students, the comparison, the esteem, the collaborations, the competition, and the rivalries, those are things that are priceless. The internet will never replace the human relationship. Yes, some online courses are really good, some YouTube channels are really interesting, thank you very much, and the high-qualified hosts can provide a lot of great content. The main problem is that an online course video is general, not designed for you, and cannot tell you how to improve. An online tutor can only give you the material, but you have to work on it and judge the results by yourself. On the other hand, there's a general opinion that there's a lot of poor people that have achieved success and can't even read music. Now, I always ask, would you get treated by a doctor that has learned medicine on YouTube? No, but we're not asking a doctor to be creative or original. We want a doctor to just do the, be masterful at what they're doing. And again, it really comes down to, like, do you want to be a master at your instrument? Then it's kind of the same as being a doctor, I, th I think. Do you want to be a creator? Do you want to be um, a songwriter, etc.? Then you don't necessarily need, need to study it. Then you can do that all by yourself if you want to. Uh, but I think you said a host of other really, really great things, especially, you know, the, the human relationship, the interaction with other people, I think is such a big portion of it. And I think you're absolutely right. Um, I do think... Uh, you said one thing, uh, the main problem is that an online course is not designed for you and cannot tell you how to improve uh, because it's not personal enough. I think, I, from my experience, my school was great at that because we had classes of like 20 people max. And uh, But in the States and other, um, even in Germany, there, there have been classes of like 50 and upwards people. And so there it can get really difficult to like really hone in on, on every single student. And therefore, you don't really get that personal experience either. You know, you don't get answers. Uh, sometimes you don't even get your, your questions answered because there's just too many people in those classes. So it's, it really depends on the school as well. But in general, I do agree with you, Julian. All right, moving on to David Talkington. Let's hope he's not as talkative as his name suggests. He says, I've got a bachelor's degree in vocal music in the 80s. I learned to sing opera, but guess what? I really wanted contemporary Christian or Christian R&B jazz type of music. At the time, I knew if no one teaching that way, now churches are all about that. I agree you may not need a college, but if you go to a scholarship like Berkeley College, I believe you would get what you want. Yes, probably so. Either way, you need a teacher who knows the, what they're doing, especially in voice. Bad teacher will screw up your voice. It's hard because some voice teachers are good and can teach your voice uh, for whatever your style. Uh, others, even with a PhD, can ruin it. Solution, get proof and listen to how well their students sound. Check the references. Remember, with the voice, you can't work alone because someone with training can hear the issues you're dealing with and help you make great changes without hurting your voice. 
Yeah, uh, with vocal teacher uh, teachers, that's definitely a big part of it. Finding someone who understands you and your voice, because every voice is a little bit different as well. You know, it's a it's a it's a physical thing, it's a bio uh, biological thing. Find a teacher who understands you as a person and understands where you want to go as a singer. If you are a metal singer and you go to a classical singer, they can teach you how to sing, hit really high notes. But if that's not what you want, then, you know, no dice, compadre. So find the right vocal teacher for you and then make sure that they know what they're doing. And here's a comment by Shariam Arpi who says, absolutely not. Generally, you might work for some and not for others. It can be expensive. And why pay when the amount of resources nowadays is immense? Well, in Germany, in the in Europe, you know, studying is usually not that expensive. So it really is, it, it's really amazing what the kind of studies we get here for so little money. You can easily teach yourself. Now going to a college academy can be really good for networking, find the right like-minded people. Yes, very true. The same can be done without going to school, but might require more effort. Yes, and more time. And generally though, I, I must say like the people that I studied with were all very serious about music. So it was much easier to start collaborations with them. Um, then it was to, f and even then I found I was always the one driving projects, you know, it was never like, um, it, it always felt to me, at least this was my personal experience. It always felt like I was doing the mammoth, uh, part of the project and the other person was kind of like tagging along. Um, but the people that I've worked with outside of colleges that never studied music, I found that to be almost non-existent. Like they almost didn't do any of the work. They kind of came for the credit, um, and stayed to, to like watch, but it never felt like they really did any work on any other projects. It always felt like I was pushing the project like all by myself. In uh, college, um, that was better at least. The ratio was a little bit more even. Uh, I mean, maybe that's just because I'm a dominant person. I, I don't know, maybe I, I just have a lot of drive, a lot of motivation. That's how I like to see it. I hope that's, that's probably a little bit better way to look at it, at least from my perspective. Um, but yeah, it was definitely easier in conservatory because everyone had that idea that idea of like, I have to make money with this someday, this is going to be my job. So let's, let's give it my all, you know, and so you have people that actually have time and the dedication, and the the dreams that they share with you. And so it's a little bit easier to find something um, that you can work out together. Also, depending on what future you want in music, this can change. If you want to be an engineer, then education might be a good idea. One can do internships and stuff, but that can be harder. If you want to perform or be in the business, then it might be easier without an education. Experience counts for a lot of it, uh, and education can sometimes add unnecessary burdens and take away valuable time. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Oh God, this is such a long one, isn't it? Swiss Army Knight says, should, should you study music? Yes, 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 yes. I, ha I have had untried musicians tell me they were afraid of losing their uniqueness or identity if they trained, but I've found that the more music I know, the better able I am to express myself and the more I've been able to find my own identity as a musician. I was very afraid of that when I started taking vocal lessons, actually. I was very afraid of losing my voice. And listening back to then recordings of before I started vocal lessons, I'm so happy that I did it because I hear so many things that I really don't like now. I think I started actually listening to myself uh, this when I started um, getting vocal lessons. I think before that I was just doing whatever felt right, but that doesn't didn't necessarily sound good. So I'm very happy that I started taking lessons. The more I learn, the more out there I get. You just have to remember that music theory isn't telling you what to do. It's helping you describe what you are doing or want to do. Very important point. You just have to remember that blah, 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 blah. It's so, so important to have to, you have to remember that. You have to remember that. Your teachers will tell you otherwise, and they will say, like, these are all the rules, or that's what it's going to sound like to you. You always have to remember, music theory isn't there to write music. It's there to analyze music. It's there to describe music. It's never there to create music. You, that's something you really have to remember. Remember that when you're writing music. The music theory comes in later. It's there to describe music, to tie everything together, to kind of keep your head, to, to be able, for your head to wrap around what you're doing, but it's never there to start anything. Should you go to music school? Depends. For me, I learned a lot in two years of music school. Most importantly, I learned how to learn, how to get better at music, and how to think about it, and I grew as a person. I learned far more about recording and working in a studio than I think I would have anywhere else. It costs a lot of money, though. Considering how little money most people earn in music, it might be best not to spend lots of money. You can get great books for studying in channels like holistic songwriting. Wink, wink, thank you very much. And everything music are actually better in terms of content than my college classes were. All joking aside, Rick Beato's classes are awesome, and I can highly recommend them. 
Moving on to Necrosonic1, who says, In my opinion, screaming in all caps, studying music at conservatory will probably make you great musicians, but it won't take you an artist. Make you an artist. Many of the great artists in modern music are defined as much as by their particular limitations as they are by their talents. Very true. Many mus musical educations put much effort into removing general limitations and making you a professional musician that can function at a high level across a range of disciplines. Yes, so agree with this. Playing your instrument in various genres of music, arranging, teaching, etc. It won't ever teach you how to hone your unique set of limitations and talents to create new music that is original and relevant. Yes, very, very, very true. As such, you might see many trained musicians being used as a part of a backing band for an artist that has a way more limited understanding of music. Yes. Oh, that's such a great comment, Necrosonic. Awesome. So it depends. Are you looking to be a professional musician or an artist? Ah, this is probably my favorite comment out of them all. Yes, this is so, so, so true. If you want to be an artist, maybe knowing less is better because it forces you to be more creative. The less tools you have, the more creative you have to get with them. But if you are backing someone, an artist, and that's where the producers come in, that's where the musicians come in with all these big artists like uh, Ariana Grande and The Weeknd and all these artists, they have some really great ideas, but they need a team of people to like really realize them, that like fill in the gaps that these artists have. But these artists themselves had to get really creative with the little tools that they had. I'm not, I'm not singling out these two artists, by the way. This is just as an example. Moving on to a comment by X Wams X X Wasm X Wasm X X Wasm X. Oh God, this is a long one, isn't it? Oh God. Oh, jeez. I'm currently studying a real good college with uh, great studios and equipment. I must say, the experience I'm getting from my institution is something I would never have been able to get on my own. Firstly, I've learned that science around sound, that being our bodies. That being our body's biology and how we process sound and the physics of sound itself. My college has industry vets lecturing us, so we're getting the guidance and wisdom from people who are successful in the field, which is something I, can learn, I can't learn online. One major key point for me in this discussion is that I'm being taught how to use industry standard gear. Being taught on high, mid, and lower end mixing consoles are things I'd never been able to get if I had to mix if I had to figure this out on my own. Also, the curriculum really prepares you for all uh, round work in the industry of subjects like acoustics, audio post, live sound, studio production, project man management, music theory, principles of sound, and a few other subjects, which are things I barely knew about when I was trying to figure it out if I should study or not. And it took me about three years to make my decision. And in this three year, these three years, I was trying to teach myself everything online, but I've come across, oh, this is a long sentence, so much useless misinformed people with large followings. Yes, there's so many of those. And for someone who doesn't know anything about sound, you'd probably believe this person. Yes, oh my God. It's, we often believe the people with the most subscribers and in general, you know, they are just really good at selling an idea, but not necessarily good at teaching that idea or really understanding what that actually means. I understand that funding might cost you a leg and an arm, but most tertiary institutions cost a lot of money. And if you want to further your skill in something, whether it be studying law or gaining the skills to become a doctor, you prepare for yourself to pay the finance. Yeah, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. Being a doctor really is something different than being an artist. To conclude, if you want to make music and start a career in only making music, then you probably don't need to study, but if you want a career by, around the music industry, I'd say invest the time and money and do the research to find a good institution because there's a big difference between sound engineers and the weekend warrior or the at-home hobbyist. Uh, I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna drink to that. Mm. Sweet, sweet water. Jay Monty says, they always say that it's better to know the rules before you break them. I have pretty decent music theory, but not a ton. I personally think that knowing music theory rules makes it harder to break them. If you don't know the rules, you totally go by your ear and what sounds good to you, but if you know the rules and you're stuck in the middle of a writing song, those learned rules can help you finish it. That sounds like a positive thing though. Anyways, for me personally, um, I know what you mean because in the beginning when you learn music theory, it feels like a set of rules and it like weighs you down. It feels like something that you're dragging along with yourself when you're writing. But the further you get into it, the easier it gets. The more you realize that all those rules have been broken thousands of times by amazing composers. Um, but if you're like, because technically the way we learn music theory is kind of historically, right? We start with like the super basic stuff, like, you know, here's what the key is. And then you learn the first kind of intervals, the simplest intervals. And then you learn kind of how functional harmony works. But that's still like... Um, it's not Middle Ages, but it's like rena Renaissance, you know, it's like super, super, super basic music from what we know today. So many things have happened in music that we rarely talk about if we go to a music class, music theory class, because it's it really negates all the things that you learned before that. But when you go through all of that, what you realize is that there really are no rules in music. Everyone just kind of does what feels right. And the, the tools can be used to analyze that and to describe what's happening. But they they really don't dedicate uh, dictate what's right or wrong, and so yes, in the beginning it can feel kind of constrictive, um, 
But the more, you, the deeper you get into it, the more you learn about, especially modern music, the deeper your understanding gets and the less decisive music theory it tends to feel. All right, and that's it, folks. Like, share, and subscribe if you like this. Also, make sure that you uh, check out the description because I just started a new Patreon account where you can become a subscriber and get some really amazing things uh, for your money. I'm not just saying that. I really think that the tiers that I've set up are really amazing. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this. I promise you guys. I'm not going to ask money for BS, for nothing. I promise you the tiers are really amazing, and you should definitely check them out in the description. There's some really, really great stuff there, and I think you're going to miss out if you don't, because some of the seats are already limited, um, and some of the seats are already gone. So do check it out right now before you miss out on what could potentially be something that you really, really want. Anyways, thanks for listening, and see you next week when we go back with the Artist Series on Linkin Park. Have I revealed that yet? It's Linkin Park. Yeah, I think I did. Anyways, Linkin Park. Great. See you then. Stay fresh.